Hi there everybody, welcome to another Chem Complete lecture in the Acid and Base lecture series. So in today's lecture what I want to do is take a look at what is known as the Henderson-Hasselbach equation. And this is going to explicitly tie in with how we deal with buffers and handling pH calculations and concentrations in relation to buffers. So that is all coming up on the channel right now. Okay, thank you so much for joining me today and using ChemComplete as your source of chemistry knowledge. So let's go ahead and get started with this conversation. So before I dig straight into the Henderson-Hasselbach equation and the math behind that, I want to have a brief discussion about buffers. What is a buffer and how do we handle or talk about buffer systems? And then the math will quickly come into that as we deal with the Henderson-Hasselbach equation. Now, as usual, for any time we're going to be doing math on the channel, I do suggest that you have your scientific calculator ready. So if you don't have that, go ahead and pause the video, go grab it, as well as a sheet of paper or an iPad if you're doing this digitally so you have a place to practice when we're going through this and take some notes okay so buffers what is a buffer a buffer is a general term used when we are talking about a solution or an environment that is going to control the pH levels whenever an outside acid or base material is introduced into that system, okay? So one of the best known ones from a biochemistry perspective is that your blood requires buffer systems, carbonate buffer systems, that can basically handle changes in pH in the blood and keep it within that narrow a reasonable biological range so that you don't have any sort of ill effects to the living system okay so the general idea here is that when you have a buffer system if you were to use the buffer and then you were to add let's just say acid it could be acid or base but let's say that I add some strong acid like HCl okay if this comes and it hits the buffer system, instead of, let's say the system had a pH of 6, right, and I add a minuscule amount of HCl, maybe a moderate amount, but certainly not an excess, because buffers do have a capacity where they can get overwhelmed. Okay, but let's say that it's a, roughly at a pH of 6, I add some hydrochloric acid. The goal here for the buffer is to make sure that we stay somewhat close to a pH of 6. So maybe we range and most buffers do range okay somewhere between five which is where we would be headed to okay six is the ideal ph of the solution all the way up to seven now some buffers are going to regulate a tighter environment uh, versus a more wide breadth but generally a ph in either direction which you're now talking about a magnitude of difference is what most buffers would be uh, considered to be acceptable or reasonable within that range okay if you overwhelm the buffering capacity then it can collapse but the idea is that the if this buffer was not here, if it was just aqueous environment like water, and I add the HCl, I would have a much stronger plummet in the pH, right? It might go from a pH of 7 or 6.9 or somewhere in there, all the way down to, let's say, a pH of 2 or a pH of 1, depending on how much HCl I add, potentially even lower than that. Whereas the buffer system, even an aqueous buffer system, if it has the components in it that it needs, it can weather or shelter that pH shift and it can basically buffer it back out to where it needs to be or at least within a reasonable range that's close enough. Okay, so what is a buffer actually made up of since we're using all of these terms and talking about buffers? Okay, a buffer is made of a weak acid and its conjugate base. So a weak acid and its conjugate base, we can use the general example here where we would say some weak acid is going to be HA and its conjugate base would be once the H plus has been released as an acid, whatever this A minus component is, right? So this would be the conjugate base and then this would be what we refer to as our weak acid here. Now, when we take a more specific look at an example, let's talk about the acetate buffer, which is a very common buffer used in biochemistry and organic chemistry. So an acetate buffer uses the acetate conjugate base ion along with acetic acid. So acetic acid would be CH3 
CO2H, which represents that carboxylic acid group that actually gives it the acidity. Okay, and then its counterpart would be CH3, C, whoops, CO2 minus. And if you're grabbing this off a shelf, it's probably going to be paired up as some sort of a salt. So maybe you have like sodium stabilizing that, right? Sodium acetate and acetic acid. And you're going to add this in some sort of ratio to the aqueous environment. And based on that ratio, it will give you a pH that that buffer is going to kind of exist in or stabilize in. Okay, so how do we determine the pH of that buffer? Well, there's a couple things we need to know, and this is where the Henderson-Hasselbach equation comes in. So now we're getting ready to shift gears and start talking about the math behind the buffer systems. So you can see the equation right here. For Henderson-Hasselbach, the equation is that the pH of the buffer solution is going to equal the pKa value of that weak acid system plus the logarithm of the ratio for the conjugate base to the weak acid. So let's break some of this down because that's a huge mouthful when we're talking about everything involved here, okay? pH should be one of the most obvious. So if you're struggling with pH or how to calculate pH, what it represents, go back through the acid playlist. And in one of the earlier lectures, I discuss how we calculate pH, how we use negative log to do so, and what it actually represents, right? Which to summarize briefly, is the H plus concentration or the proton concentration in a solution. Now, the pKa, what is the pKa? Well, the Ka is the equilibrium constant for the acid's dissociation. So similar to how H plus can be represented with pH when you take the negative log, the pKa is nothing more than the negative log of the Ka value, and that will return the pKa to you. And Likewise, just like when we have pH, the larger the Ka is, the stronger the acid. But that means the lower or the smaller the pKa is, the stronger the acid, okay? Just like pH. So if we have a very high number in terms of our H plus molarity or concentration, we would expect that leads to a very small number on the pH scale, right? 0, 1, 2, that's what we consider acidic on the pH scale. So pKa is going to be the negative log of the Ka value for that weak acid and its dissociation into its conjugate base, okay, plus the log of the conjugate base. So this is going to be whatever that A minus value is, its molarity or its moles, if you're talking about the volume staying constant, okay, over the molarity or the moles of the weak acid itself. So it's conjugate base over acid. That's the ratio you want. And it's going to be the log of that ratio that you combine in order to get the pH. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. We're gonna see in a minute as we take a walkthrough of two different problems here. So here's the first problem. As usual, I'm gonna tell you to try to work on it before you come back on pause the video for the walkthrough. So here's the problem. What ratio of H PO4 2 minus to H2PO4 minus is needed to develop a phosphate buffer with a pH of 7.45. The Ka of the pair is 6.2 times 10 to the minus eighth. So those are the pieces of information you have to solve this puzzle. What I want you to do is first, as you approach this problem, look at the two different components here, the two different chemical species. Which one would you call the conjugate base and which one would be the weak acid? Okay, think about the definitions of weak acid and conjugate base and just even acid and base should help you with that. Okay, you have a pH value that you're shooting for here, right? A buffer with a pH of 7.45. So we're already being given a pH to plug in there. That's the goal. And the question is talking about what's the ratio that's going to be needed there. And then there's a Ka that's being given. We could turn that into a pKa, okay? So your goal is to find the ratio. Get your scientific calculator, get a piece of paper or something that you can write on or keep notes on, and give this a shot. Go ahead and unpause the video when you're ready, and I will have the walkthrough available. Okay, so hopefully you had a chance to try to work through this. What I have up here first is the actual equilibrium 
expression or not expression but the reaction right that's in equilibrium here for us to take a look at so h2po4 minus is the acid in this case it's the weak acid and that's because it has an additional proton in comparison to HPO4 2 minus so it only makes sense the acid has to give off the proton in order to make its conjugate base so we would call this the weak acid and then we would call this its conjugate base in this case so we now know which one we're working with in each case right so the next thing that you need to do is utilize your Henderson Hasselbach equation now the problem says that the pH is equal to 7.45. So since that's on the left side of the Henderson-Hasselbach equation, let's go ahead and mark that down. It's going to be 7.45 equals. Now it equals the pKa. So I need the negative log of the Ka as my value there. So it'll be negative log of 6.2 times 10 to the negative eighth per the Ka that the problem gave, right? plus the log whoops plus the log of the concentration of HPO4 2 minus over the concentration of H2PO4 minus that's the acid part right so just so that we're on the same page this right here is what we're searching for we want that ratio what is the numerical value of this ratio if it's anything greater than one I need more of the conjugate base because that's in the numerator if it's anything less than one then I need more of the acid component going into the solution okay so hopefully so far so good so if we do this we can do a little math consolidation here and this is going to be 7.45 equals 7.21 whoops plus the log of the conjugate right so plus the log of I'm just gonna put for a second up here a minus and ha because it's a little bit quicker there okay so from there I can then go ahead and I can consolidate this mathematically and if I do this and take 7.45 minus the 7.21 so I just have the log expression on the other side I should get 0 0.24 equals this log expression okay so it's going to be the log again of the HPO4 2 minus over the H 2PO4 minus. So how do we get the actual ratio? Because this is the log of the ratio right now. Well, you have to take the anti-log. So what you would do in order to finish solving this is you would need to say, I will take 10 to the 0 0.24. And if I do that, then it'll do the same thing to the other side. And by taking 10 to the log of that expression, I just get that expression back. So 10 to the 0.24 is going to equal this expression without the log term there. And if I plug that in, 10 to the 0.24 is equal to 1.7. So 1.7 is the ratio of HPO4 2 minus to H2PO4 minus. In other words, I'm going to need 1.7 moles of the conjugate base for every one mole of the acid that I use. Okay, and that is the correct ratio in order to get this phosphate buffer to exist at a pH of 7.45. That's the key to answering this question here. Okay, let's take a look at one more before we wrap up here. Determine the pH of an acidic buffer that has an HA, okay, so we're using a generic acid now, that has an HA of 0.145 molarity and an A minus of 0.115 molarity. The pKa of the acid is 4.87. So now we are determining the pH. Here it should be very evident what the conjugate base and the acid are because we're using the generic versions. We're not using a specific acid and base. And then the pKa is already in its pKa form. You don't have to do a Ka conversion. So arguably this problem hopefully 
should be easier than the last one. Okay, so give it a shot, pause the lecture, see if you can figure it out, and then unpause when you're ready. Okay, hopefully you had a chance to try that out. So here we go. The pH is what we're searching for here. We know that that's going to be equal to the pKa value, which is being given to us. It's 4.87 plus the log of the ratio. Now, remember, it is conjugate base over weak acid. So what I need here is 0.115 over 0.145. If I plug this into my calculator, I should get the correct answer. And if you do that, what you should get is a pH that is equal to 4.77. So that is how you use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to deal with buffers. Now, I want to mention that buffers is sort of the catch-all that this is used for, but there are other techniques in chemistry that are kind of consequences of buffer systems where the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation would still be applied. So for instance, if you wanted to do a weak acid base titration, not a strong one, but a weak one, okay, you would use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation during parts of that titration if you were trying to solve for the pH values after a certain amount of weak acid or base had been added to the solution before you hit the equivalence point, okay? So hopefully that has been useful as far as explaining the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation and buffers. As always, thank you so much for learning with me. Hit the subscribe button to stay up to date, like the video if it helped, and go over to chemcomplete.com. There's tons of free resources available to help you. There are also paid guides that are very affordable, five, 10, $15, that will tackle subjects and go way more in depth than I do on the videos here in order to help you. So if that's a way you'd like to support the channel, you can do so. You can also always use the thanks button as well. So. Thank you so much again for learning with me, and I will see everybody in the next lecture.